I'm here to talk to you today about the Virtual Reality Dental Clinic. Um, and I work for the Institute of Dentistry in Whitechapel in East London. It's between the city of London and London Docklands or Canary Wharf, as you may have heard it called. And we have 500 students um, in undergraduate, 100 in postgrad. And I work for Queen Mary University. So I have lots and lots of responsibilities in my job, as you can see on the screen. However, I just wanted to pick a few out. Um, our virtual learning environment or learning management system is Moodle. So this is really the platform for all of our students to access all of their courses and all of their course materials. Um, we do, I do a lot of work in Storyline and Rise for creation of online courses. Um, and I've started playing with Lectura. <laughs> um, we do a lot of traditional 2D videos. So for example, plastic teeth in the lab, horrible clinical procedures in people's mouths that are disgusting, um, and lots of scenario-based work. It's also my job to horizon scan and look for new technology and look for different ways of um, teaching our students various different clinical procedures. Just as a sub note, I do have 12 courses on Udemy about Moodle. So the whole project came about because my boss on a Wednesday afternoon decided that I was going to uh, write a bid for her by Friday. And so I wrote a bid for Health Education England and I wrote about three different things. I thought, oh, well, we'll have a laptop and a, and a microphone and I justified it. And then I, uh, a few other things. And I thought right at the end, I thought, what, what can we push the boundaries of? So let's just put a bid in for £30,000, $42,000 uh, for a VR dental um, clinic. And of course, that was the one that they chose. And then I was in the position of going, oh, my God, I have to actually do this now. How on earth am I going to do it? So the idea that I had was to create this dental clinic using 360 videos and photos of our existing um, clinical areas and different buildings that we, we uh, teach dentistry in. And we wanted it to be um, basically a scenario based learning environment. So our students do a lot of scenario based learning which was ideal for scenario, a scenario VR. So we started with um, looking at hardware. I eventually went for an Insta Pro 2, which was ridiculously overpriced. Um, it's a very expensive camera, but I was trying to, trying to future-proof um, the, the, the future of, of, of VR, and I wanted the best thing I could buy. Um, that worked out fairly well for sort of big open spaces, but as Duncan said previously, um, the, the Insta One X2 is probably better for some of the close-up um, clinical things. We went for the Pico headsets. Um, I've, I've had no problems with them. I think they're absolutely amazing. And obviously, Scenario VR. So we had no real in-house expertise um, in 360 video at all. As I mentioned before, I was very much a 2D video person, procedure um, based videos. So I'd not really used 360. And this is where Video Interact came in. As a part of the bid, I felt it um, important to get some real professional guidance on actually creating our first couple of scenarios and learning from them, learning about the scripting um, and the filming and everything essentially, so that I could then do them myself in the um, I cannot speak highly enough of Video Interact. They've all, the whole team, Duncan, the two Jacks and Laura, have been really amazing with me. They came in and helped me with scripting and they really changed the way that I thought about 360 because from traditional 2D videos, I was writing a script in, in that sort of vein and they came in and said, no, you can do so much more. And it really opened my eyes to what you can do with 360 and how, how um, amazing it is. So as I said before, it's, it's very different to creating 2D video. I've heard a lot about this today from various other speakers, and it's important that you take advantage of that 360 environment. So the creation of things like multiple stories, we have a nurse in the background who's doing something different to the actual dentist. Um, we use quite a lot of choices. What, what would you do next sort of things? Um, lots of embedded 2D video. This is um, 
mainly because um, we didn't want a 360 camera in someone's mouth, <laughs> but also it's a really good way of explaining um, technical and, and dental things um, to the students in a 360 environment. And we quite heavily used quizzes and drag and drops so that we could reinforce the learning and make sure that students are actually understanding what's going on. So we created two clinical scenarios, the adult and the child nervous patient visits the dentist. These were quite um, simple um, scenarios that aimed at our year two and three students who really are just about to go into their clinical years to actually start playing with people's teeth. And so they needed um, something that they could, they could learn about actually the process that you have to go through when a person comes to the dentist. And with the help from Video Interact, I took the script um, from the actual dentist themselves and modified that into scenes so that we could have a filming schedule of uh, eight scenes in the end, and then added things to those scenes afterwards. So MCQs, videos, choices, that sort of stuff. Um, Duncan mentioned earlier about scripting, and I feel very much the same. We didn't want to script the dentist who does this every day um, because they'll never say the same thing twice, but they'll always ask the same sort of questions. So it was more important for me to, to, to script the answers um, for the actor. I've put here review, review, review. I, I can't. I, it's really important that the whole process is reviewed by everyone involved especially in dentistry, when it has to be an accurate representation of what's going to happen. Um, we would stop the, the, the scene being filmed if something wasn't quite right, because you can't have um, something that's not right. And then obviously um, the process was the filming, the editing, and then the launch. So let's talk about the filming. So we hired an actor, uh, Helen, she's in the top left picture here, and she was amazing as the patient. Um, but the dentist was a real dentist. He was one of our members of staff for the reasons I mentioned earlier. And we also had a dental nurse um, who helped us in the background with various different bits. Um, that's just to add realism, really. We'd always have a, a dental nurse within a dental bay. Um, we filmed on, you know, in October and we filmed basically in the reception, in the waiting room and in the clinic itself. Um, and this was all with uh, Video Interact. You can see them all in the various pictures. Uh, we created the 360 video of the actual scene. Um, we separated the audio, so they had clip-on mics to an audio device. And we also created the 2D videos at the end. This was a whole day's filming. Luckily, um, the editing of the 360 footage was done by Video Interact. That was one hurdle that I couldn't get over. Um, and thanks to them, I, I, I've got an idea of how to do that now. But they also helped me out with the 2D video inserts, which is very kind of them. And um, I made sure that all of the images and all of the inserted images were the accurate NHS ones that are used on real life clinics. And then I started the uh, amazing journey of Scenario VR, which I never used before. And the way in which I did this is I, I um, took some photos of our pros lab, our prosthodontics lab, where they create um, fake teeth. And then it, and I imported them into Scenario VR, and I thought, wait a minute, we can create something here. We can create an escape room. And this was very much um, targeted at staff and students so that they got used to the environment um, of, a, of a 360 environment. They got used to using Scenario VR both on the web through the VLE and also um, in, in the headsets itself by the, by the VR headsets. And what I wanted to teach them is the variety of different things that you can do in the, in the 360 environment. So how to navigate around, how to drag and drop um, items and how to answer MCQs, that sort of stuff. And this was launched on the 1st of October. Now I hesitate here because I didn't stop the screen i have i'm going to show you the escape room i'm not sure if you can see my screen now we can still see your presentation yeah. presentation okay let me just show the other one do you see a pros lab now 
Uh, I think it's taking a moment to load. Duncan is saying it took him a really long time to get out of your escape room. <laughs> <laughs> we see the lab now. Excellent. So when um, the students go in, they're presented with little instructions, and then you can actually look around our pros lab. Um, I wanted to encourage them to click on things. So if they click on certain things, does certain things, I could turn some fire on, for example, hopefully. <laughs> and they can move around the pros lab and do different things within in the environment. So if they click on this, for example, they get a little um, clue. If they click on the TV, they get another little clue. Um, I think you get the idea. And also I included lots of drag and drops in here because I felt that it was important for them to get used to it. So here, this is using conditions and that's not right. And I can't remember the, <laughs> the way, but they can drag and drop and it will give them a star or a key or a reward. I also quite like the dartboard feature where you can throw a dart into the board and you get a clue. And just the final thing I wanted to show you in, in the, uh, in the pros lab is the sharps game. I love this drag and drop. Lots of people have talked about it today, but you're, the idea is here we drag and drop the sharps into the sharp bin here. So if you drag a mirror in there, it will tell you it's not a sharp, but if you drag a needle in there, then you can complete the game. And obviously once you've got certain things and do certain things in the environment, then you can actually collect the code and it will show up here using variables. So if we click on the clock, hopefully they get a code which then appears on their dashboard. Um, until they get all the whole code, they can't actually escape the room. So this was a great example of, I'm just gonna stop for a second, share my presentation again. Um, it went really, it went down really well with the students because it gave them a um, a new new technology to play with, and it gave them the ability to actually have a look around and see what what can actually be done uh, in scenario VR. So the adult nervous patient um, scenario was built after the escape room when I knew what I was doing a little bit more in scenario VR, and it involves eight scenes, and we also included some patient interviews at the end. There are choices within each scenario so that um, the outcomes are different. So, for example, if a patient went in with asthma in their medical history, then it would result in a different diagnosis or a different treatment plan. Uh, and same with diet, uh, smoking and alcohol and things like that. We've got over 10 questions in it, links, images and text throughout and over 20 videos. 2D video. So I'm going to show you it now. Oh, I better say this first. It was published um, to work on both a VR headset and online. And we previewed it to the staff. You can see the staff in the pictures on the slide. We had to sit them down because I had staff bumping into things all over the staff room. So we sat them on chairs and they were having much fun. Um, and this will be launched to students in February 2022, a proper launch event. I've been a bit um, struggling with COVID, not myself, but the COVID situation meant, meant students haven't been in the uh, Dental Institute for me to actually present it to them. Okay. So let me show you this. I'm going to stop sharing that. And hopefully you can see the interface. I'm just going to show you a couple of scenes from this. So scene two, I'm going to turn it down a bit. Oops, you have the, there's the dentist, there's the patient. And the first thing that pops up is a question about what they should do next, what, what you should ask the patient next. The answer is date of birth. And then it will tell you the answer is correct and give you a video explanation as to why that is correct. How we work in the clinic here is actually the And then the scene continues and we can follow them around our Barkentine uh, waiting room if we want. 
And there's also a little uh, menu button at the bottom so that students and staff can go back to the main menu at any point. Um, so there was a couple of scenes in reception and waiting room, and then we actually went into the clinic itself. Ooh, very loud. And this is the, the nurse in the background, patient, and the dentist. And then there's a series of questions and choices that the students can click on. So that was a wrong answer. <laughs> you would use open questions. And you can follow the scenario along and different things will pop up and you can click on it and all that sort of thing. Okay. Sorry. So, oh, is she talking still? Okay, I just wanted to show you a slide on the future. So we are already planning to film the child scenario in uh, February and um, we're just finalising actors. Who knew child actors have uh, laws that prohibit them to uh, work all day? So we're looking at twins and everything to try and get a full day. Um, and what I really want to do with Scenario VR is integrate it into the dental curriculum. I think this is probably the most important thing for me because there are far too many times within uh, e-learning, especially at universities, where people do things and then it's just left um, and it's never never mentioned again. What I'd like to do with Scenario VR is integrate it into the curriculum. So when the students are, are taught the specific subject within the curriculum, we go into the lectures, we present what we have and really try and market the fact that we've done this scenario something different, but all within the curriculum. We have some other ideas about um, using drag and drop. So how to set up a clinical dental bay is one of the things that our students do often. And using the import feature of transparent PNGs, which is basically how I did the sharps game in uh, the escape room, would be great because it meant it could, we, could, um, we could get them to arrange the room, arrange the bay as they would in real life. I think that once it's launched properly, we're going to get an influx of interest from academics and um, I think it's going to open the floodgates. I think I'm going to be doing Scenario VR for the next 10 years um, because there are so many things that, that, that we can apply it to within the dental curriculum. OK, here's a few contact details from me. I'd just like to say a special thanks to Catherine, the e-resources officer who's uh, now left me, but um, she was instrumental in everything that we did um, in the project. OK. I'm sorry about my sh uh, screen sharing issues, but if anyone has any questions, I'm really happy to talk to you about them. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ben. A uh, couple of questions uh, in there, and if anybody has more, you can just pop them into that question bubble right there and we'll, we'll get right to them. Uh, first is from Nisha. She said, compared to testing on uh, real life dummies, uh, is VR you know, still viable? Are schools paying for hardware and software training? Um, well, I think it's better for, for use in scenario-based um, situations more than clinical-based situations, I would say. Yeah, we, and we actually do have, uh, here in the United States, Vanderbilt University uses scenario VR courses as part of their curriculum for training nurses. So, uh, and it's, you know, part of the graded curriculum as well. So you have that, that same sort of thing in there and it's definitely all paid for by the university. So distinctly a possibility. Uh, David says, uh, you have positive feedback video for the date of birth. Did you also create negative feedback video? Uh, yes, indeed we did. Okay, so lots and lots of, how many, how many videos did you have uh, embedded in there? Uh, there are 20 odd in okay. the whole thing. Okay, so quite a lot. Uh, really uh, glad to hear about you. You'll be using it for the next 10 years. That sounds good. <laughs> I like that. Lots of, lots of possibilities there. And, and you got uh, trained uh, in shooting 360 by the best. Duncan is uh, incredible in that area for sure. Definitely. Absolutely. All right, well, any more questions, please uh, pop them in. Uh, looks like we've uh, gone through all the questions.